Hey, howdy, hey, sorry for the delay. Welcome back to another episode of GFA TV. I'm your host, Zeno Makes Music, and today we have a very special GFA TV spotlight. It's so special because we get to talk to the esteemed guitar builder, Kenny Hill. Kenny Hill gives me a tour around his shop, and we also have a little one-on-one -on -one chat. We talk about all things from his mindsets as a guitarist to his mindsets as a guitar builder. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's GFA TV Spotlight. So we started our journey in Kenny Hill's woodshed. The woodshed is just a repurposed storage container that stores all his valuable woods. Most of the wood has been in here for... I mean, it's been cut into guitar wood for decades, really. Most of it. And there's... Various rosewoods, there's Spanish cedar for necks, there's spruce from Italy, spruce from Switzerland. It just all goes in here. There's a dehumidifier that runs. The, the wood can't really absorb too much moisture. The wood is all dry. It's right. been cut for such a long time. Right. Here, this, this wood up here is neck stock that we use, and that's Spanish cedar. Right. Steel strings usually use mahogany, uh -huh. but I just love this stuff because it carves so well, it smells good, Sure. and it's a bit lighter in weight. Yeah, no, the viewers at home can't smell this room, but they're missing out. Yeah, yeah, this is... You know, somebody asked me, he said, can you bottle that smell? And then I picked up a guitar and said, it's bottled right here. Right, right. <laughs> you know? right. And that's one of the things that I really love about, you know, I mean, probably everybody has this experience of some memorable instrument that you open the case and then there's a, a, an aroma that comes out of it. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, there's a nostalgia. It puts you that. in a, like, a time and place. I was just it talking does. about that. And yeah. you know, when I was first building guitars, when I first got the material to build my first guitar and then bent the sides, so it was rosewood, something like this, but but even now, when, I, when we're going through, it's like, oh, it was so exotic that this wood came from India and and it's purple and it's and you bend it and it heats up and it smells and there's this wonderful smell like an incense or a perfume and and it's still to this day 50 years later when I smell that it's just like yeah that's what I want to do with my life that's awesome <laughs> so the next space Kenny Hill shows us is the opening room of his workshop Inside these two rooms, he has all of his cutting tools, the heating pads to heat up the sides of the guitar, all the things you need to start the general shape of a guitar. These two rooms take up about half of the building space or the workshop space, but they probably only take up about a tenth of the actual build time. Right. Uh, we've got... Uh, so what are, these, what are these here? Okay, these are bending blankets. These things heat up. And uh, so, you know, you can do the rough bending of sides, the preliminary bending of sides. This is a cute little CNC machine, oops, a little baby CNC machine that we use to cut the slots for the true tempered fingerboard. I see. So I had to get, to do that work, I couldn't do that with my hand tools, so I had to right. get that CNC. But it's so small, but it, and relatively inexpensive, but it works really well. It's been surprisingly trouble free. Sure. Other tools around here are set up to do just individual operations. It's like when you're making the neck and you got to cut the slots for the sides, you put the neck here, you cut this, the other side, cut it, it's okay. done. So this saw only does that. Right. right. This saw only cuts fret slots. Awesome. Um, so we've got certain things that are like that that we've been able to set up and just leave them set up. Sure. Otherwise, it's just basically woodworking tools. But as I said, even though it takes up a fair amount of space and weight, I guess, uh, it's not, it's just for, you know, processing the raw materials mostly. Sure. Up the stairs we have the heart of his workshop. This is where all of the neck carving takes place, the polish takes place in that room on the left, and this is where we see many of the more finished looking guitars. One of the things I really loved when I first started moving through guitar making was I, 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 was, I was kind of enamored with the idea of it being a 19th century skill. Sure. That it was a lot of handwork and the work that you have to labor for years to get um, into your skill set. And I am less enamored with that now, but we still 
you know, so much of the work is done with chisels and saws and right. clamps. So what's going to yeah, right here? This is, okay, so see, this is just so cute. Um, it's a, this is called the go-bar deck. And there's various ways of doing this over the years. Uh, the old-fashioned one was just to have sticks that you bend and kind of put in. Yeah. All this is doing is gluing the center reinforcement strip on right now. Right. But and this is clamps. So these are like little chalk absorbers. Right. There's a spring inside. You know, this is another thing. This is like okay. So here, this is sides that are just getting joined by their tail block. There's many ways you could do that, but here we are. You know, this is a fingerboard just got glued on. Um, we put truss rods in all of our guitars. And that's one of the so-called innovations. It wasn't an innovation, it was just the decision to put it into a classical guitar when right. traditionally that had never been done. Uh, it was the best decision I ever made in my life. <laughs> um, do you wanna talk about this at all? Okay, see, so this is, yeah, this is pretty cool, isn't it? This is double top, lattice braced, you can see that the lattice is made out of two different woods, right. cedar there and spruce, and then it's slightly off center. But see, the double top is the same thing. See, it's cedar on the inside, spruce on the outside. Lattice bracing is not the only choice, but guitar business is a fashion business. Sure. And so these things become talking points. Yeah. And, I mean, there's, there's an effect. There's stuff that happens, you know, that we get a certain effect out of the lattice bracing that's different than the fan bracing. Right. But so much of this stuff goes through trends. Yeah. Well for me the you know the music and the instrument really are woven together. And I've never been a virtuoso competitive player, but I've been consistently playing out of the love of it. Yeah. And in you know, I mean even pretty much anything that I say about guitar making I could say about playing. And now that I'm doing composing, whether I could say that about that. To me there's not such a boundary. There's not an identity that you have to put on it that you're stuck with it. Yeah. That, that all of those things blur. And in fact, every aspect of your life has got those things in it. Where do you take a chance? Where do you rely on you know, experience? Where do you lie on the experience of your forebearers? Sure. You know? Sure. And it's just, it, it's, it's, it makes every minute and every breath full. Yeah. Sure. You know, because it's not like it. Things get done, but they don't get decided right. forever. Sure. You sure. know, and you, you need to make enough decisions to keep things going, but not always know the answers. Getting to see Kenny's shop up in the San Francisco Bay Area is always such a treat, and if you're ever in the area, feel free to stop by his shop and say hello. But I'm curious, what kind of guitar are you playing? Where'd you get it? And what are your favorite specs about it? Feel free to leave it in the comments below. Anyways, I'll see you at the end of this month for the next episode of GFA TV. Until then, I'll see you next time. Zeno out. Bye.